And so I want to read just a line and we'll go through this text rather quickly, but thoroughly. Amen. Um, and and the Bible says here in chapter three, it says the king, you all have your handouts. Amen. You have your handouts. It says the king made a giant gold image of himself to be worshipped. The king Nebuchadnezzar made a giant gold image of himself to be worshipped. Today, for a few moments, I want to meditate on a topic when the heat is on. Let us pray. God, we are grateful, thankful, overwhelmed, and honored by your tender mercy, your loving kindness, and your desire to make yourself known through your word. So will you open our hearts and will you still our thoughts so that we can hear from you? God, your vessel is weak, your vessel is broken, and your vessel is human. But you are amazing and you can use even me. So God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our rock, our strength, our redeemer, and our friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen, amen, amen. Many of you all are familiar with this text. Is there anyone who's familiar with this text of the fiery furnace? How many of you all know that Daniel story and the fiery furnace? And And here's kind of a summary of the first 12 verses. The first 12 verses simply say this, that he summons King Nebuchadnezzar. um, um, He summons all of his leadership, the magistrates and the satraps and the administrators and the advisors and and all the counselors. And he he summons them and he says, hey, I made this golden image. He says, and then when my royal orchestra, my royal band begins to play, I want you all to stop what you're doing and bow down and worship me. Hmm. In other words, he says, and, and if you don't do this, and you remember, this is the second time he done lost his mind and tripped fully out. Because you remember in the last chapter, he said something very similar. He says, he says, and if you don't fall down immediately and worship me, you'll be put to death right away. And you'll be put to death in a fiery furnace. Are you all with me? And, and, and so, so watch this. This is the second time, because you remember last chapter, he said the same thing. He says, interpret my dreams, and if you can't tell me what I dreamed, and you can't interpret a dream, I'm going to kill you right away and burn up your house. My man had issues. He had anger issues. Are you all with me on that? And and, and he also had this incredibly huge ego. And and we pick it up here, and, uh, um, and, and I want you to understand that this is not unusual, that in this world, um, in your first thing, that the world always creates idols. Write it down. That, that he created an idol of himself to be worshipped, but that's not new. Even today, we create idols. We do. We, we create idols um, out of beauty. We hold beauty to a standard, and everyone wants to have that particular image of beauty. And you all know what's crazy about when we have external beauty and we lift that up is because sometimes what's, up, what's beautiful on the inside ain't beautiful on the I mean, what's beautiful on the outside ain't beautiful on the inside. Some of the ugliest people I ever know were beautiful on the outside. Come on, somebody. Y'all acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. How many of y'all seen somebody one day and you was like, oh my God, she is or he is, uh, uh, uh-huh. And you had a conversation like, uh, 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 uh. (laughs) Or the reverse is true. Have you ever seen someone you didn't think was so attractive when you first looked at them? And then you got a chance to hang out with them and spend some time with them, right? And then you realize they had more beauty on the inside that permeated the outside and actually transformed how you saw them. That's what I like to believe what happened with me and Tanisha. She saw, she looked at me, she said, mm, mm, mm. And then I made her laugh a little bit. And she's like, he ain't so bad. Come on, somebody. Anybody had to rely on the inside because you ain't get blessed on the outside. Like, hey, whatever. I can point some folks out. Amen. Don't have me get the pointing. Shoot. Uh, uh, Al, pray, wave your hand in the air. No, no, no. I would, I would never do my boy Al like that. Amen. So, <laughs> y'all know I got issues. And I'm in, I'm in mourning, so I might be tripping this morning. Amen. So, 
So, so, so we, make, we make idols. We make idols out of beauty. We make idols out of sex. We make idols out of material possessions. We make idols out of our power and our position and relationships. Have you ever seen someone who always talking about people they know? Try to lift themselves up by connecting themselves to other folks. We, we make idols out of popularity. Amen, amen. And we see that there's nothing new uh, about people making idols. Number two, write this down. Um, and, and that we know that I'm tempted to create, watch this, write this down, a false image of self to impress others. Write it down. A false image of self to what? Have you ever made a false image of yourself to be impressive to others? Image building sometimes can lead to self-idolization. You can see people's social media posts and their, uh, uh, their profiles and meet them in real life, and you're like, well, I've been misled. <laughs> you can see someone's resume and hire them for the interview, and then you work with them for three months, you go, I've been what? Hoodwinked, bamboozled, lied to. And let me tell you, so can I, can I, take a, can I just take a, 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 just kind of a, this, this may sound unfair to some people, but it's just true. And the church, which is a place that is oftentimes guilty of false advertising. Let me tell you what I mean. We say, come as you are. We even got songs in the hymn book that says, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. But when people come just as they am, we judge them for who they am. And you force us because we want to fit in to create a false image so that you don't think less of us, but we can never get healed unless we tell the truth about who we are. And so we come into a place of healing, lying about our symptoms, and we never get the healing, and we leave here broken because now we have been victimized by false advertising. And then y'all get mad at me when I tell y'all I got issues. You shouldn't say that you're a pastor. I don't know one that ain't got no issues. My stuff is all messed up. I don't even know how God gave me a platform to tell anything to anybody because I'm so messed up. Are you all with me? Can you write this down on the side? Your issues actually qualify you when you accept the fact that you have them. Yeah, he on one today. Yeah, I've been gone for a week. I'm back. <laughs> but listen to this. The Bible teaches us that in verses, three, uh, verses um, 8 through 12, that there was a rejection of the idols. And I want you to write this down. If, if I, if we reject the world's idols, watch this. People will try to burn you. Let me say it again. People will try to burn you. When you stand up for what you believe, when you don't follow the crowd, when you do what you know is right and not bow down to the images of the world, people will try to burn you. And it's interesting because in verse 12, um, they, they go run to the king and say, yo, your music played and, 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 and them Jews... Them Jewish boys who are now in their mid-30s, them Jewish ones, them outsiders they, who got these key, these key positions, they didn't bow down. And it's interesting, what, what was the motivation? Nebuchadnezzar didn't even know they didn't bow down. Why are you going to go run and tell? And you thought hating just came in our society. <laughs> Maybe they hated because they had a position that they wanted. Maybe they hated because in their minds, they were outsiders. They were Jews. They were not Babylonians. And how dare you have someone outside of your own culture have a position of influence? But whatever it was, they wanted to burn them. Number four, write this down. Doing the right thing always, write this down, always makes someone angry. God has called us to do the right thing. And not only when we do the right thing, but people try to burn you, 
try to stab you in the back, but it always makes someone angry. Listen to me. You know, Jesus did the right thing. He was, even if you were perfect, you still gonna make people angry. Jesus was perfect in all his ways, and people were always angry at him. The Gospel of John always talks about how people were trying to kill him and destroy him, and he had to slip out the back way. When you stand for what's right, you will make folks angry. Jesus was killed because he stood for righteousness. How many of you all choose relationships over righteousness? How many of you all have stood alongside with someone, listen, who you know they were wrong, but you stood with them because you didn't want to be ostracized and you don't want to make them angry? Lord have mercy. You know, there's, there, there, are, there are three kinds of people in the marketplace, in the world in which you work. There are those who are stuck up, full of themselves, Nebuchadnezzar. There are folks who are kiss-ups, like the other governors and the other leaders. And then there are other folks who are stand-ups. What up are you? What's up with you? Amen. You all remember this? Hear me, let me say this. You write this down because you ain't. This is not about politics. Write this down. This is not about Democrat or Republican. Write it down. This ain't about politics. But one of the things that so impressed me, because in this world, this poli- you know, the left ain't supposed to agree with the right, and the right ain't supposed to agree with the left. You know, if you're a Democrat, you cannot agree with a Republican. If you're a Republican, you cannot, you better not agree with a Democrat. If you're a Fox News person, you better not be agreeing with MSNBC. And if you're an MSNBC person, you better not be caught watching Fox News. Come on, somebody. Am I lying? And, and did you know that one of the greatest men in our modern day history, John McCain, got ostracized and labeled as a turncoat because he spoke up for Barack Obama when they were candidates. Not as his, for his political position, not because he uh, agreed with his stances on health care, anything else, simply because someone was trying to assassinate his character and he said the brother's a good guy. When you stand up and not a kiss up or a suck up, people who supposed to love you and have your back will become angry. Who's angry at you because you're a stand up? Who's your friend because you're a kiss up? What's up with you? Y'all with me on that? So, so here we go, here we go, here we go. So we, so we go and it says, um, what should I do when the heat is on? So when the heat is on, that means you're under pressure. When the heat is on in a project at work, that means you're under pressure, you're under a deadline, you have an impossible task and it has to be completed in, a possible, in an impossible time with limited resources and limited ability and the heat is on. When the heat is on in, your, in, 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 in school, you got a project and it's the finals, you got a, a, a final here and a, and a final project there, you still got to work and you, you got all this stuff, the heat is on, the pressure. When the heat is on, that means the pressure is on. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Amen. And so, and so what should I do when the heat is on? First one, write down. And this is going to bless you. Don't worry about defending yourself. Amen. 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 Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves in this matter. I try to tell my, my students, I try to tell my children, when you write, you ain't got to argue. If you're explaining, you're losing. Come on, somebody. How many of y'all can handle the fact that when you know you are doing the right thing, you ain't got to explain yourself? The truth will speak for itself. You don't have to defend yourself. Amen? If someone lies on you, don't try to unexplain it. Just say, okay, it's cool. Because the truth always comes out. My mama would say, Was done in the dark. Number two, remember God has the power and the ability to save us. When when the heat is on, we must remember that God has the power and the ability to save us. Look, it says, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we worship is able to save us. You have to remember when you are thrown in the fiery furnace, because you remember, he said, throw them in the fiery furnace, all three of them. He says, and make the fire three times hotter. Come on, somebody. The fire was so hot that it leaked out of the furnace and burned folks who wasn't even in the fire. 
He says, he says, and he says, I don't know if I'm going to get thrown in this fire, but if I do get thrown in the fire, my God is still able. You ought to turn to your neighbor and say, even though I'm going through the fire of my job and the fire of my relationship and the fire of health and the fire in my life, God is able. Come on, somebody. You ought to turn to your neighbor and put your hand on your neighbor and say, he is able. You ought to get sassy with it. God is able. He's an able God. Number three, we must believe God will save us. Listen. Not only do we have to know that God is able, but God is willing to save us. Y'all see that? Listen to what it says. And I I got to share this. He says, and he will save us from your power, O king. When you go through the deep waters, this is Isaiah 43 and 23. So, 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 So the Daniel text says that he will save us. Not that he might, but he will save us. And then the Isaiah text tells us when you go through the deep waters and the great troubles, he says, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God. I got your back. Listen. Y'all can't always freak out when the heat gets turned on. Come on, somebody. Because not only is God able, but God is willing. Now, y'all still didn't get this thing. It's cool that somebody is able, but if they ain't willing... It means nothing. And if somebody is willing and ain't able, it means nothing. God has the duality of willingness and ableness. Boy, I ain't getting no help in here today. That's okay. That God, watch this. And then in verse 19, 2, 3, 3, it says, great. Listen to what he says here. And, um, and, 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 um, And it's highlighted in verse 18. He says, but even if God doesn't save us, We will never serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden statue that you set up. In other words, when when the heat is on, we must announce publicly our loyalty to God no matter what. For God I live and for God I die. I can sit in the midst of atheists and agnostics and other folks of other faith, and it does not faith me because my faith is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Are y'all with me on that? You can't be afraid, and I'll tell you. You know, some of us, I couldn't wait. I could not wait. Hear me. I could not wait to go off to school. First of all, I couldn't wait when I got 16 and I got my first real job. Because all the other jobs I had before that was kind of stuff I did. I'm cutting grasses. I'm, I'm selling candy and freezy pops out the, out the freezer. And that's what we do in the hood, y'all. <laughs> we, take, we take some Kool-Aid to put in a styrofoam cup, stick a toothpick in it. You don't know nothing about that. Yeah, yeah. Freeze that thing with a piece of plastic over the top. And then you sell them. Anyway. And then, and then you don't have flavors like grape. You got flavors like, you know, what flavor? Purple. Y'all know purple ain't a flavor, right? Yeah. That's a color, but anyway, anyway I'm sorry. I, may I digress? Yeah. I forgot I'm in Orange County, but I, I ain't from Orange. I'm, I'm from over there. So, so, so. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And, 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 and I couldn't wait when I got 16 to get a job, and, and, and I wanted to work on Sundays. And I wanted to come in Sunday at 9 o'clock and get off at 3 o'clock. Right during the sweet hours of church. Got it? Because I was, because you know, you, you, you didn't know that I was a, uh, I don't talk about this much, but you know, we were, we were drug babies. My mama drug us to church every Sunday. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and, and I couldn't wait to get undrugged. <laughs> and then I go off to college and I wanted to undo all that I had learned in Sunday school and all that I learned in worship. Come on, somebody. Y'all know I'm not the only one. And what I discovered in the midst when the heat was on, I defaulted to what I was taught. And that it would have just been better for me to never denounce the Lord. Always live publicly because there are still things that haunt me today that would not have been in my life had I simply just been public and fair 
and honest that I am a child of God and that there's nobody that can get me away from what I know. Y'all with me on that? Can I just pause for a moment? How many of y'all have a similar story? Thank you. I'm glad y'all stopped lying because like, like two years ago, I'd have been, it'd have been just me and Dwight would have been the only ones with our hands up. Amen. All right. Let's, let's keep moving. Does this make sense? Is this helping somebody today? Let, let, me, let, me, let me close this thing out. What happens when I trust God in the furnace? What, 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 what happens when I trust God in the furnace? Write this down. God will walk through the fire with us. In other words, God would never leave us alone. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and he asked his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into this hot, fiery furnace? And they responded, yes, we did, they said. He said, well, look now, he shouted. You can see four men now. Watch this. Not just see four men, but they are unbound, walking around free in the fire, unharmed. And the fourth man looks like the son of the gods. In other words, when the heat is on, when we're in the fires of life, God made a promise that he would never leave us nor forsake us. That God is with us even until the end of time. And, uh, when, when Jesus uh, met with his disciples in Matthew 28 and he was getting ready to go, he says, and remember, lo, I'll be with you even until the end of the age. You all have to know and have to recognize that God would never leave us nor forsake us. And even in the fiery furnace, we must remember the promises of God. And God promised over 7,000 things in the Bible. And one of his promises is that never alone, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Listen, I told you all before, uh, last week I was in uh, Virginia. And it, um, this is um, week, it was week three of uh, five weeks of pastoral renewal refreshment. And one of the things I shared with you all that um, these pastors, they did this research. And no matter how small the church was, the smallest church they, res- they did the survey on, was a church of seven members um, in an urban environment, and they did all the way up to 6,400 member churches in, um, in Nevada and all over the country. And, and it was all denominations, all races, all sizes, um, um, just all this different kind of stuff, over, over a thousand churches, and they found three commonalities of all church pastors. One is that they felt discouraged often. Two, they felt depressed often. And three, they felt alone. That no one can understand them fully, which led to this fourth characteristic of just chronic fatigue. And one of the things that they did to help us and encourage, and it's amazing because you got these 40 some odd pastors from all over the country in this cohort. And we all was like, yeah, we felt all that. And, and, and the young lady who is the, was the facilitator of that particular workshop, she said to us, don't you believe the promises of God? Don't you know that you're never alone? And that when the heat is on, God will never leave you? How many of y'all are blessed by that? Someone has lost their job and you've run out of money, and you think that you're all alone. You're not alone. God will never leave you. Nor Some of you all feel like you're all alone because you, you at wit end with your children. You don't know what to do, but God will never leave you alone. Let me give you some other stuff. I think some good stuff when the heat is on. What, you define your own heat. Well, you define your own fiery furnace. And, 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 and you're looking at the fact that that fire has burned others who wasn't even in it, and you, you're thinking that God is not going to be with you, but God is with you. Look at the next one. Number two, God will burn everything that ties us up. This dude, Nebuchadnezzar, was a trip. Not only did he, did he, did he make the fire hotter than it had ever been before. Now, you got to understand, a regular fire will kill you. You don't need to make it three times because regular fire is hot. That's just evil. And, and, and not only did he put them in there, 
but he bound them up. Hand and feet. And he looks in there. The fire did not touch them, and they were unbound. That the thing that was meant to destroy you and hold you captive, God uses that to free you. As a matter of fact, it's interesting because sometimes heat is an agent to catalyze wounds to stop them from bleeding. How many of you have seen those movies? I told you I want to be a superhero. You know, one day I want to be a superhero, you know, and, you know, but I don't want to be the one that get hurt, you know. Like, like Batman, I can't be Batman because Batman be getting injured and stuff, you know. You know, and like they, 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 sometimes these guys, you know, they, they'll get hurt and they're, they're bleeding and they, and you know, and it's the climax of the movie and, and you know, and they, they're weak and they say, and they take a match or take a torch and they'll burn a piece of metal because if they don't stop bleeding, they're going to lose. And they take that hot thing and they put it on the wind and they go, ah! Rambo. Ah! <laughs> and the fire and the heat becomes an agent of healing to stop the bleeding. And sometimes God allows us to go through the fire to stop the bleeding. Also, we know that Isaiah 48 and 10 tells us that the fire has refining ability. It also removes the impurities. Are you all with me on that? Sometimes God allows us to go through the fire. Shucks. Lord have mercy. Let, 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 me, give you, let me give you a couple more things and then I'll get us up out of here. Number three, God will give me new freedom in the fire. In other words, they were free. They were bound, but they were free. They were in the fire, but yet they were free. And when they came out, they still didn't bow down. In other words, when God, so there's three things that God can do in this fire that God can save us. Sometimes God can save us from the fire. Sometimes God can save us through the fire. And sometimes God can save us with the fire. Hmm. <clears throat> So, so, so sometimes God keeps us from getting in the fire, and that's a testimony of his salvation. He kept us from some stuff. How many times have God kept you from some stuff? Yeah. Amen. But then sometimes God can bring you through some stuff, and when he brings you through it, you, you've, been, you've been purged. But sometimes God will allow a fire as a means of diversion for something that is worse. You go into the doctor because you got a sore shoulder. And while they're checking your shoulder and doing an x-ray, they see the beginnings of breast cancer. You thought you had a soldier injury from working out, trying to be healthy, and they got just enough to see something that saved your life. Sometimes God uses the fire to actually help you discover something else. Y'all with me on that? Amen, amen. And then you're not afraid. And one of the things that was great, when they went through the fire, they was never afraid of any more fires. You didn't get this thing. I, I want to go back. 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 Uh, I, I, I was talking about, um, you know, us, us Christians, us church folks. You know, and one of the things that, you know, we have to do, and I know some of y'all going to say, he always picking on church folks. I'm a church folk. One of the things that we have to help people do is to live honestly. Like this, the Al McCurdy guy I'm telling you about, my friend, um, he's passionate about the ministry of prison ministry and things of that nature because his son made a terrible mistake and spent some time in prison. And he doesn't hide that. He's not afraid to tell that story. You know why? Because he's been delivered. Now, you can't tell me that there's no loving parent that ever wants their child to go to prison. And no, especially no affluent, highly educated, um, high wage earning person. But we need to be honest that sometimes stuff don't work out the way we have it planned. Right, right. But God is still good. 
And God is still with us. And as we're going through the fire, God will allow us to get through. Are you all with me on that? Let me move on because y'all seem like y'all. Number four, God makes sure we, I, come out unharmed. (laughs) Not harmed. That they were in the fire. They didn't smell like smoke. They didn't get darker. It didn't look like they got a tan. There was no ill effects of the fire. In other words, sometimes God brings us to the fire and we are unharmed. We thought that we would destroy us. We thought it would take us out. And God allows us to come through what? Unharmed. How many of y'all had a nasty little secret you didn't want nobody to know? And it got out and you thought it would destroy you. And you came out unharmed. Y'all with me on that? As a matter of fact, if the truth be told, God will use that to help us to grow. Let me give you these last two. Number five, it will bring people to God. Then the king said, praise the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to rescue his servants. Watch this. They trusted in him. They they defiled my command and and, um, were willing to die rather than serve or worship any God except for their own God. You didn't get this thing. And and it says, therefore, I make a decree. If anyone says anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be put to death. There he go again. (laughs) Always trying to put someone to death. Let me tell you, though, let me tell you the power of this. Their unwavering testimony converted someone and brought them close to God. How you handle the fiery times in your life will determine how people see your God. How we handle sickness, how we handle divorce, how we handle crazy children, how we handle the the ups and downs in our lives will give is a testament and a testimony. Come on, somebody to the goodness of God, and it will lead folks to I have people running from. We should not be afraid of folks that come here with any situation. Because we got a God that can handle any situation. I can't give y'all my full testimony. Y'all can't handle it. Shoot, I'm still dealing with it. Last point. Does that make sense, you all? Lastly, God will reward my faith in heaven. Each of us 1 Corinthians 3 and 10 says that each of us must be careful how we build our lives because Christ is the only solid foundation. Whatever we build on the foundation will be tested by fire. If what we build is left standing, we will be what? Rewarded. Listen, that God will reward us in heaven. On Friday morning, I'll close with this. My dear grandmother-in-law, at the age of 89, went home to be with the Lord. And we believe that she has now received her reward in heaven. As we were going through um, these documents, I told you we see all these documents and stuff, we found a ledger. So my, 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 um, my grandmother-in-law, Tanisha's grandmother, um, had the ledger of the church giving records. So back in the day, they literally every week, Robert, you may not believe this, they would say, Byron Cope, $100. Ivan Pitts, $25. The whole giving record. And she had it for years. And they would, they would post this on Sunday mornings. And I think, I don't know if that was shame or what. <laughs> But you didn't want to be on the bottom of the list. <laughs> but there were two things that I, I was reinforced with my uh, grandmother. Is that she was a generous giver and she was a faithful student of the word. And that I know for a fact that she sowed good seed and that her now, her reward is in heaven.
When the heat is on, never forget that you're never alone. When the heat is on, that which bounds you will be burnt up and you'll be free. When the heat is on, you can not be afraid of what comes your way. When the heat is on, that is an opportunity for God to show someone who God is through your, through your furnace experience. But most of all, never forget, when the heat is on, your reward is in heaven. There are some folks here today that need to be reminded that there's a greater reward, that the pain and suffering of this life will cease and that the beauty and the beauty of the Lord and the beauty of his promises is that none of that will go with us and that what we sow here on earth will reap a benefit in heaven. How many of y'all think that's good news?